Dairy is Australia's fourth largest agricultural industry. It enjoys an excellent reputation for its quality, food safety and progressive push towards environmental sustainability. The industry stretches across all states with the main milk production centred around southeastern Australia's high rainfall coastal areas. We're currently milking 450 cows here at Bush League. Uh, it's on a 120 hectare milking platform, so a stocking rate of just under four cows to the hectare. Uh, our feeding regime is predominantly pasture based. Uh, we're in a high rainfall area in South Gippsland. Uh, we do buy in grain for the cows around 1.6 to 1.8 tonnes per year, and also cereal and high protein hay. Probably to be the most profitable is what we can, uh, producing milk as cheaply as possible. It compares well to farms in sim similar areas to ours in high rainfall areas uh, where we're a pasture based system. But they do vary a lot throughout the state and throughout Australia in the hotter, drier conditions. Uh, there are barns set up in Australia now and total mixed rations as well but it's certainly uh, a lot different than North America where cows are housed for most of the year. But then it's probably more similar to New Zealand where cows are outside grazing pasture. The biggest changes would have been through the breeding program. Genomics is certainly a game changer over the years was everything's moving at a lot faster pace. Um, and then on the farm side of things, I guess we're, you know, got a lot higher stocking rate. We're growing a lot more feed. Everything's a lot quicker now. I guess it's a never ending challenge breeding. Um, our objectives have changed over the years. We're now a seasonal calving herd. Uh, so we are heavily focused on fertility within the, within the cows. Um, so it's an endless challenge. I truly believe the Jersey cow is the most profitable cow of all breeds. Uh, the stocking rate that we're able to, to run here per hectare is, um, is far higher than any other breed that we'd be able to run. Australians love their dairy products, consuming 98.6 litres of milk a year and 13.5 kilograms of cheese per capita. Nearly 40% of Australia's milk goes into cheese production, 28% to drinking milk, 21% to skim milk powder or butter, and the remainder to whole milk powder and other items. Dairy is also a substantial export player, with 35% of production going to overseas markets. Australia is the world's eighth largest exporter of dairy products. Australia's clean green reputation will ensure these markets remain viable well into the future. Australia's farm gate payment systems are as varied as the country's climatic conditions. Milk prices paid by processors to farmers are based on the fat and protein content of the milk. Most payment structures are standardised to kilograms of milk solids. In 2021, the opening price will be around $7 per kilogram of milk solid. The Australian Jersey cow displays a tremendous amount of dairy strength and when you combine that with a great set of feet and legs, I think they're two key attributes that are, are pivotal to um, success, I guess, within a, a predominantly grazing system that the Australian dairy industry is. Um, as well as a, a very high standard of quality udders, I think the Australian Jersey cow is a very correct cow overall, very balanced. What I'd call a very durable cow that can fit into multiple um, farming systems anywhere around Australia or for the world, that fact. The distinct advantages jerseys have over other breeds are heat tolerance, longevity, health and fertility, and their feed conversion efficiency is second to none. Jerseys produce 17% more kilos of milk solids per 100 kilos of body weight than other breeds. For all these reasons, this is why I believe the Jersey breed is truly Australia's dairy's finest cow. Uh, essentially it's the same. We calculate for all the major traits. 
Uh, so very similar to, to what's happening in North America and across the world. We do have a couple of unique traits, a lot of emphasis on workability, uh, particularly in our big herd situations. Uh, and we've also developed feed efficiency as well, or feed saved. Plus a heat tolerance, ABV, which is unique to Australia. Uh, the Jersey breed is unique, or it, its popularity comes from the fact that uh, they're a moderate size cow, um, so they suit our grazing conditions. We don't want extremely big, heavy cows, particularly in our, our intensive grazing. Uh, but also the fact that their milk is, is high component. So that suits our manufacturing. Uh, we're basically a manufacturing base rather than a liquid milk. So high, high percent fat, high percent protein, it's really good. The most popular markets have been South Africa, uh, New Zealand, uh, more recently the US and Canada. Uh, and throughout Latin America has been very popular markets for Australian jerseys. Uh, in South Africa alone, um, two bulls sold in excess of 250,000 straws of semen. The main reason those bulls were used heavily there was through crossbreeding. Um, and uh, those bulls uh, offered fertility, um, feed efficiency, ease of calving and heat tolerance is what some of the main factors. Jerseys uh, have been uh, really embraced AI, particularly in the early days, back into the 60s when jerseys genetics first became available. There's a lot of New Zealand genetics used in this country. And then uh, jersey breeders little embraced the North American genetics back in the mid 80s. And since then, uh, they've had preparedness to use genetics from all around the world, um, from New Zealand, from the US, from Canada, from Denmark, uh, and I have to say that I think the Australian jersey is a little bit unique in that aspect because I think that Australia is probably the one country that's blended all those bloodlines together, which makes us very popular in other countries. I'd like to give you an insight into some of the leading maternal lines developed by jersey breeders in Australia. Our highest classified cow at Excellent 95 is the International Dairy Week Grand Champion, Sherlyn ICU. She is also the dam of excellent daughters and a sons of side excellent daughters and she's produced over 9,600 litres of milk. She is by an Australian bull, as is a dam. We then move into some tremendous maternal lines like the Frank Lip Broadland Illusion line. Established by the 1949 Grand Champion of Melbourne Royal Tolgarth Illusion, this family has bred and developed many Royal Show Champions, leading size and indeed high priced animals. The Bushleaf Fernleaf family is one of the great families in Australia. It has been successful right across the nation with grand champions at IDW and indeed royal shows throughout Australia and many leading sires. The current highest priced cow in Australia of the Jersey breed, Van Fernleaf 10, is from this family. The Melanie family developed by Wallace Dale is a tremendous maternal line having produced two of the top eight BPI sires currently and many on-farm challenge champions and high producing cows. The Darraway Vanessa family has been one of the most potent families in the breed, established in South Australia and produced many great AI sires like Van Alem, Navara, Bart Power, Hatman, Invincible and the current number three sire, Elgonon. Carnbray Estelle family was developed by the Carsons 70 years ago and has produced many excellent cows and many leading AI sires like Elton and Edison and Carnbone and the recent high type Bull Bontino. Also at Carnbray is the Daisy family, which developed the great IDW champion Valentino Daisy 11, excellent 94. Her son, Roulette, is the current number two BPI sire in the breed. The Love Lies family has been with the breed for more than 90 years, established by the imported Jersey Island cow, Lights and Bar. Just recently, the top five, five of the top 10 BPI animals in Australia are from this maternal line. This family has won a host of Royal Show Champions for generations and produced many leading AI sires like Aldrin. This is just a short insight to some of the tremendous maternal lines in Australia that have been part of the fabric of the dairy industry. G'day, my name's Glenn Barrett, General Manager of Jersey Australia. On behalf of all our members, we'd like to thank US Jerseys for asking us to put together this video on the dairy industry in Australia. We wish all young breeders the very best of luck as they enter this year's Youth Academy program. This is an exciting opportunity for you to develop and hone your skills and capabilities and deliver benefits to the Jersey breed in the US and across the globe.